Welcome back traders. I hope you're following along with these videos. Let's start looking at the nitty gritty sides of the MetaTrader 4 platform. We're going to start off at the very top left and we're going to work our way through the buttons and we will discuss it quite quickly because I don't want you to fall asleep but feel free to pause the video or go back if there's anything that you have missed and if you feel like I haven't covered something fully enough please let us know through the online course which you can get for free at jpmarkets.co.za so we can start building up a frequently answered questions section. The very first button we're looking at here will add a new chart to the window. So let's say you want to follow a different currency pair. You can click on this and you'll get a drop down. And then you can select one of the pairs that you have loaded here. So I want to have a look at the New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. And now it downloads that currency pair for us to look through. It's as simple as that. The next option here is profiles. The profiles don't work quite as well as templates. So we won't be covering a lot of this, but just so you know, it is possible for you to have your MetaTrader set up with a whole selection of different currency pairs and, and different graphs and charts and everything like that, and have that as a profile and then quickly switch between them. For example, if I switch to the British pound profile, it will reload all of these settings to how the British pound should look. And if I can go back to the defaults, it'll load up what I had before. The only issue with profiles is that you don't actually save it. It's automatically saving the whole time. So you can't really have a setup, save it, and then come back to it. It will just automatically go back and any changes you've made will just overwrite it. The next button here is our market watch button. If you remember, we had our market watch up in the side here and you can click this to toggle it and bring it back anytime that you want. The one thing about the market watch button, which is quite useful, but not useful enough to keep on the whole time, is when market watch is open, you can right click anywhere on, in here and you can go to symbols and it will load up this over here. If you find that uh, somebody is trading a currency pair that you don't have access to, 99% of the time you will find it in here. So for example, let's check out FX2. And these are all the pairs that JP Markets have set up under FX2 for us. If you want to say trade the cryptos, uh, Bitcoin is a very big thing at the moment. You'll see that mine is grayed out. This means that I don't have access to it immediately. All I have to do is double click. And now it's in gold and I can close it. And now when I open up a new pair, I will see that it has been added. This would allow you to trade the Bitcoin and make money off Bitcoins without actually having to buy Bitcoins or use one of their horrible exchanges. All of it can be done directly through JP Markets MetaTrader. So I'm going to close MarketWatch and we'll have a quick look at Data Window. Data Window is an interesting one. When you move the mouse over the chart, wherever the mouse is exactly, you'll see that the Data Window changes. This is giving us the information about where the mouse is. It tells us the date, the time, and then gives us open, high, low, and close, as well as volume. And volume is the amount of lots being traded at that particular time on that particular currency. So at this point, we had 2,398 lots being traded. Currently, right now, we have 2,747 lots. And if you remember, one lot is 100,000 US dollars. So you can see what a massive market this really is. But that doesn't help us too much. So I'm going to close the data window. Next, we have our navigator again, which is an alternative way of how to add our different indicators. For example, if I wanted to add the MACD, I could click and drag it onto the chart and it'll start loading up all the different information for this. Don't worry, we will be going through the MACD in the course coming up, but we will be accessing it through another button, which I will show you soon. So we're going to get rid of this navigator. Next up, we have the terminal. Now the terminal is something that you should be keeping your eye on, especially when you're in multiple trades. It's a good way to have a breakdown of what's happening at the bottom. But if you're struggling to see something on the chart, you might want to close it and you'll see that it expands the main window and gives you more real estate to look at things. 
Strategy Tester is something that is not covered in the scope of this course, but just so you know what it is, if you have uh, written or programmed your own expert advisor, or if you've downloaded another one, uh, this is one that I've been working on. You can load it up and you can run tests and see how things have been running. I won't do that now because this one <laughs> takes quite a long to do the back testing. And the idea is that you can plug in an EA and see how it would have performed over a historical period. Another big button, new order. This is the one everybody wants to use. Once you've clicked on new order, you'll see that you get the new order window open here. You must just confirm the symbol, but by default, whichever chart you had active, the symbol will be in. So for example, we were looking at the Euro dollar, so there's the symbol. If I were on the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, and I click new order, you'll see that it's got the Kiwi yen up there instead. This can be altered, but I don't suggest it. It's best to rather just make sure you've clicked new order off the correct window. Inside new order, we have the different volume sizes that can be set. This is covered in more detail coming up. But just so you know, volume is not the amount of dollars. This is the amount of lots that you will be placing. So 1.00 sounds like a small amount, but it is actually $100,000. And here you can set your stop loss and take profit. And if you go ahead, you can click buy or sell. I'm going to enter a buy and a sell just so we have something to look at. There's my buy. There's my sell. And we will come back to that. Let's load up the terminal. And you'll see now in the terminal window, I have a profit and loss. You'll see it starts off in negative. This is because we are covering the spread or the cost of the trade itself. The big bonus is that when you see an actual profit and close it out like that, that money is yours. There's no additional fees to be paid at the end of the day. You'll also notice that on the chart itself, we have these dotted green lines. These are showing us the entry points that we went into the market. And on the far left, it's got a buy and a sell. So it shows us which line is the buy, which line is the sell. The next one is the MetaQuotes language editor. Now this is only for people who like to do programming. We won't be covering programming. This is a very advanced thing and best done in a one-on-one. -on -one. If you are into programming, the MetaQuotes language editor is very similar to C++. So you should be able to move across fairly quickly if you've already been programming in that language. The auto trading button is quite a big one. Auto trading is when you download an expert advisor and you set up certain rules and, and things that it must follow. And if everything is obeyed, it can trade for you without you even being on your computer. So you could leave your laptop or desktop connected to the internet with MetaTrader running and it can trade for you. Now, sometimes this is fun, but it is better for you to actually understand how to trade and do everything yourself. But you may have installed an expert advisor that you may have given permission for it to trade on your behalf accidentally. If this button has the red sign here, then no matter what other settings you've put in MetaTrader, it will not trade your account for you. So it's like a, a last check. I like to keep that red. It's very rare occasions I'll click on it and make it green. This would allow my EAs that I've installed to actually trade for me, but I'm going to keep that off.